Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to RUSI's event and our launch of our new far-right extremism and terrorism program. I'm Karen Von Hippel, the Director General at RUSI, and it's really a pleasure to welcome everyone here today. Today's focus really is on global perspectives on the far-right extremism threat, and we're really delighted that we have speakers and participants joining us from around the world to share their expertise. Really the aim of our event today is not only to improve our understanding of this, this threat, but also uh, about what more we can do to prevent uh, future attacks, to build resilience and learn from each other. Uh, at RUSI, we have launched this new program, the Far-Right Extremism and Terrorism Program, as a collaborative effort inside RUSI. It involves three of our research teams, Terrorism and Conflict, the Center for Financial Crime and Security Studies, and our cyber team. Uh, all of our experts have been doing a lot of work over the years on the Islamist-inspired terrorist threat. Uh, and now they are using those same skills and uh, techniques honed over many years of work to really focus on this, this different threat, this different uh, threat on, on the terrorism spectrum. Uh, and we are really hoping to grow this particular program into a larger research program. Uh, this is the first event, and we are looking for longer-term funding as well as partners. So if any of you are interested in doing more with us, please do get in touch with any of us here at RUSI. I think we all know that the subject of far-right extremism has taken on added importance in recent years. Uh, we've seen uh, a number of uh, of threats in many parts of the world and a number of attacks in many parts of the world. And it's, and it's, a, it's a, an issue that impacts the North and the South and probably is exacerbated by conspiracy theories, misinformation, uh, different belief systems people have, and the, the uh, ability of the, uh, the internet to, to make so many of these issues go viral in a way that was not possible in the past. Uh, I, you know, I think that the far right threat has grown in, uh, let's just say interest in far right threat has grown recently. And this event itself is an indicator. We've had over 400 people uh, sign up to join us at different parts of today. Of course, closer to home in Europe, uh, we know that there are a number of concerns in many European countries, uh, in several in particular, such as France and Germany. We're worried about where, where leaders are worried about uh, far right extremists infiltrating their security forces. In other parts of Europe, there are populist leaders who are advocating quite extreme views from the top, not necessarily extremist or I mean, not necessarily terrorist views or or violence. But but there is uh, there is an issue that you'll hear about soon when you listen to Sir Mark Rally about extremist content and what it can do to motivate people. And of course, here in the UK, there have been attacks as well, uh, including the tragic murder of, of parliamentarian Joe Cox several years ago. Uh, in the US, I think we're all very aware of what has been happening over the last few years. And in fact, in the United States today, the FBI now considers far-right extremism a far more uh, serious threat than the Islamist-inspired type of terrorism. And in fact, more people have been killed in the United States by far-right extremists than by Islamist extremists. Uh, in the US, it's typically white supremacists and others, organizations and individuals who really have been targeting ethnic minorities, have been targeting religious groups, they've been targeting immigrants, abortion clinics, which is a longer term uh, challenge, and then LGBTQ plus uh, peoples among others. Um, so even if, the threat in one country may appear nascent, even if it doesn't seem as bad as it may be in other places. Uh, we all know now that these threats can metastasize and grow quite quickly, as we learned uh, in 2014, 2015, and 2016 with the power and the appeal of the so-called Islamic State. We also know and we're learning how uh, the far right and the Islamist extremists and terrorists learn from each other, they copy each other's tactics and strategies, and they often carry out attacks in response to something that the other has done. And so we are looking forward to learning from many of you today uh, about, uh, about your research into, into these issues. 
So today, as mentioned, we're going to discuss the roots of this form of extremism, how embedded it is in a number of countries, um, how, how they learn from each other across countries and globally, and then also what governments and non-governmental actors can do and are doing to counter it while also building resilience. Uh, before I turn the chair over to my colleague, uh, Dr. Jess White, who is uh, leading on this work for RUSI, and she will talk more about today's event, and she will introduce our first keynote speaker, Sir Mark Rowley. I just wanted to thank all of you for joining us today, all of our speakers, our chairs, and participants. We're looking forward to your feedback and for a very active uh, learning day from all of you, and really looking forward to continuing this important work in the near future. So thank you very much, and over to you, Jess. Thanks very much, Karen, for that welcome. I'm really pleased that you've all joined us today for this event, looking at a global perspectives on the transnational far-right threat and response, which does mark the launch of our far-right extremism and terrorism, or FRET as we're calling it, programs, Karen mentioned. I've been spearheading the development of this program, I'm a research fellow on the terrorism and conflict team, and have been joined by amazing colleagues from across RUSI, as Karen was mentioning. I would especially like to recognize the efforts of my colleague, uh, Claudia Vina, for her work to get this event and program launched. In the last few years, far-right extremism and terrorism have received an increasing amount of tension. However, the last two decades of international counterterrorism have largely been focused on addressing the threat of Islamist terrorism, which has had substantial consequences for the amount of research produced on the evolution of the far-right threat, as well as um, for the applicability of, of counterterrorism frameworks to address other threats. Our aim with the development of our FRET program is to help address these research gaps and inform approaches for tackling this evolving threat. To launch our FRET program, we wanted to begin with this conference, exploring global perspectives on the transnational far-right threat and response. We're very excited to be highlighting the research of many key individuals in this space, practitioners and researchers. We hope that this conference will indicate where RUSI's FRET program can make a valuable contribution to this ongoing and wide-ranging discussion. By leveraging the combined ex expertise of RUSI's Terrorism and Conflict Research Group, the Center for Financial Crime and Security Studies, and the Cyber um, Security Research Group, as well as the RUSI office in Nairobi, we will be able to examine many of the cross-cutting and multi-dimensional issues that make far-right extremism and terrorism such a complex area to understand and address around the globe. One of the first challenges of addressing uh, the far right is the term itself, right? This is an umbrella term. It encompasses a wide variety of ideologies, including uh, white supremacy, ultranationalism, xenophobia, male supremacy, and many others. Unfortunately, the term is often used without clear distinction or explanation. Additionally, there is often a lack of clarity between where mainstream right-wing political expression ends and extremism begins. This is often complicated by the lack of legal definition for extremism and com common legal challenges associated with linking crimes committed under extreme far-right ideologies to terrorism, especially in certain national contexts. These issues are magnified by the often less organized structure and looser affiliations of these threats. We will see throughout the event that this looks different across geographical and geographical and political contexts, and we hope that we, what we learn today will bring us closer to a working definition. However, just to note that our RUSI FRAT program will mainly focus on the end of the far-right extremism spectrum that encourages or contributes to violence in some way. In spite of these ideological or definitional challenges, uh, far-right extremism and terrorism are definitely of growing concern on the threat landscape, with the Global Terrorism Index indicating a 250% increase in far-right terrorist incidents over the last five years. This is especially true given the socio-political dynamics we have seen over the last couple of years, with increased political polarization, heightened racial tensions across societies, COVID-19 response backlash, increased time spent online, spreading conspiracy theory, and I could go on and on. These dynamics are often working to feed extremist ideology across what is often the majority population demographic in many Western countries and around the world, and is often also fueled by mainstream political rhetoric and media, as well as alternative and social media sources. 
All of these elements considered together highlights the need to address the problem of far-right extremism is a pressing one. This event will highlight the existing state of, of the research on transnational nature of threats and herald the start of the research contributions that RUSI aims to make through our new research program. Despite the emphasis that far-right groups and movements place on nationalism and local roots, these networks are increasingly forging transnational links. In the last decade, we have observed multiple examples of attacks serving as a galvanizing force for similar acts in other parts of the world, enabled by the internet, as well as by easier and more frequent physical and financial interactions. The global logistical and ideological links between such groups have grown stronger, thereby challenging the nature of the threat. The globalization of attacks and, and extremist and terrorist groups indicates the need to look at the threat through a transnational lens in order to develop a more effective response and to en enable the design of preventing and countering violent extremism programming, counter-terrorist financing approaches, and possible ways to limit the spread of hate by tackling far-right threats earlier and more effectively. We have a keynote speaker to provide us with some opening remarks for our conference today. Let me introduce to you uh, Sir Mark Rowley, who is a distinguished fellow at RUSI and a former, the former head of UK counterterrorism policing from uh, 2014 to 2018. Uh, he worked to prevent 27 Islamist and extreme right-wing plots. Uh, he represented the police with the National Security Council and many other responsibilities, including the protection of VIPs, royals, and parliaments. He was the Deputy Commissioner of the Met Police between February and April of 2017 and was knighted for his service and leadership through the attacks of 2017. He is unfortunately not able to be with us today, so we have his remarks recorded. And please, could we play that now? Congratulations to Rusi on this first event in the Far Right Extremism and Terrorism Program, a really critical piece of work. Having led the UK's counter terrorism policing machinery from 2014 to 2018, not only was I in the chair during some of the worst challenges that ISIS created in the new wave of Islamist terrorism that was um, accelerated and dispersed by the use of social media and the idea of inspiring attacks rather than simply directing them from HQ. I also saw the rise of far-right terrorism. It was an interesting challenge to properly assess something that was so new and indeed as I was surfacing it in 2016 and 2017 both publicly um, and also privately across the security estate it was a difficult thing to calibrate because whilst of course we as most western nations have always had uh, far-right sort of racists for want of a better description, committing crimes and um, hate crimes. Um, this was relatively new in escalating into the, the beginnings of organised far-right terrorism. At the end of 2016, um, material we put together led to the Home Secretary prescribing national action. The first UK far-right and terrorist group prescribed under our legislation um, in modern times. And that was a pretty seminal moment for me. Yeah, one of the things I found interesting was public debate didn't want to face up to the fact that far-right terrorism existed. And many months after that, um, I remember being on a major news show and having to argue the case that far-right terrorism was real um, and a heavyweight journalist arguing it's not really terrorism, is it? So I think there's an acceptance challenge that has taken some time to um, surface in wider society. Now, while the far right element of terrorism is in the UK is not the biggest part of it, the biggest part by some ways is Islamist, it is a real significant and growing element. And what the counter terrorism machinery has had to do is to turn its eyes to a new type of threat. Um, and most of the tactics and tools of, that have been developed dealing with um, ISIS and other Islamist groups have been affected effective, but it has taken some new approaches and some new insights, and certainly a whole new approach to collection when all the tools existingly in place were pointed toward the pre-existing threats. It's quite a challenge to get those sophisticated intelligence gathering mechanisms around a new threat. And some of those dimensions are different when it doesn't have a global centre of gravity. Islamist groups have tended to have a global centre of gravity, and even though the more dispersed approach that perhaps ISIS have taken, um, much more propaganda and much more inspiring, not all based around a small cohort of people 
um, organizing themselves and directing attacks. So, that's, so while we've had a more dispersed Islamist approach, it's down the center of gravity, whereas the right wing threat has been much more dispersed. But we do see signs that they are joining together, connecting, sharing ideology, sharing thinking, um, not in so much as becoming a global organization from what I can see, but certainly some interesting connections that I think is really timely for RUSI and um, global networks of contacts to work together to explore what that pattern looks like. The other thing I wanted to talk about there was the level of extremism. And in my mind, the way I look at this, underneath this level of people determinedly committing violence of any type in ter terrorist violence, are those creating the ideologies that feed and create the permissive environment in some communities and some individuals um, that leads to them stepping into, into active terrorism. Whilst in Britain and other Western countries, particularly those that have faced difficult threats over many years, we have built a powerful infrastructure to deal with terrorism. And as I say, that's now being pointed more and more towards the far right terrorism. We don't have the same infrastructure to deal with extremism. And the extremist propaganda um, that now obviously includes um, very toxic far right material is a real challenge for Western nations where we are finding it difficult to create the right balance between freedom of speech and some of those values that we cherish so clearly, but not allowing a permissive environment that allows extremists and terrorists to radicalize others, often vulnerable people at a difficult moment in their lives. I published a report working with the then UK um, Counter Extremism Commissioner, Sarah Khan. I published a report in um, early part of this year, March um, 2021, which we called Operating with Impunity. And it was a report looking at how well the UK legal system deals with extremism. We have a very mature legal infrastructure for terrorism, but the question was, what about extremism? And I was very concerned by what I saw. Um, and it was interesting looking at a problem from a different perspective to my history over many years as a police officer um, and, and most of it working in national security in my, in, in my latter stage of my career. Looking at it afresh, it became clear to me that extremists have lots of opportunity to exploit gaps in the law. And looking across the world, I found no Western jurisdiction that had a determined and sophisticated approach to finding the right legal approaches to dealing with extremism. There were individual tools and tactics developed in different jurisdictions, um, but there wasn't any country that had really grabbed the issue thoroughly and systematically. A statistic that came up in that research from a, a survey done by another organisation illustrated to me how extremism is more pervasive and impactive than we realise. The issue I centre my thinking on quite often is anti-Semitism. The reason I think that um, theme is instructive is that sadly, the Jewish community are at the center of the Venn diagram of hatred from different groups of extremists. Um, not only are they a target of the far right, which of course we've seen going back to the 30s, um, but also they're a target of the far left and the Islamists. Survey data in the UK suggests that 16 to 24 year olds, over 15% of them, over 15% of them, do not believe the official accounts of the Holocaust. This is also the same cohort of people that um, for the last few years have been receiving the majority of their news through non-traditional sources, i.e. largely through various social media channels rather than through um, mainstream um, broadcast and um, printed media. That for me is a scary statistic that is illustrative of the scale we face in dealing with extremism and the far right extremism element for that is a particular component. So as I look forward to seeing this strand of work that Rusi and partners develop and um, being involved in it in any way I can, the questions on my mind are 
not simply about looking at terrorist threats and ideologies and connections across the world and funding streams, but the ideological underpinnings that is creating a permissive environment from which terrorists are recruited. And I believe the data shows that that extremism is sufficiently pervasive to create a wide pool of people who are starting to develop um, extremist and concerning views, which is a first step on a view to terrorism. Of course, it's not an escal it's not a it's not an automatic escalator. By no means everybody steps up that journey, but the more permissive environment we create for extremist views that are um, hateful in their ideology. Um, and uh, supportive of violence, the more likely it is that some of those individuals, even a small portion, will take the step into violence. So I think besides looking at the networks and connection across terrorism, it would be fantastic to see what Rusi can turn up working with partners in understanding the extremist ideologies that underpin this, how they connect, and perhaps um, and more insight on the legal regimes and strengths and weaknesses of approaches across the world. Um, I wish you good luck with this work, and I'm sorry I can't be with you today. Thank you.